think we should start with rats. 57 people called the city last year to complain about rats in their toilet. And apparently they weren't very happy about it. Now, I'd like to take a moment to consider the position of the rat. <laughs> generations of generations of rats have been digging and digging and digging and digging to get where they want to go. Now, consider that first rat, the very first rat that encountered the sewer pipe. So suddenly, you can get anywhere you want to go in the city with ease. And then add to this, in 1927, they invented the garbage disposal. So not only does there's this freeway that will take you all over the city, but now it's constantly bringing you food. And over time, now again, thinking like a rat, over time, becomes a call to dinner. I mean, you hear that sound and you are running as fast as you can. You're following those little particles of meat and the vegetable and the potato, and you're making your way towards where that's coming from. And finally, you get to the house, you get to the disposal. I don't know how you get to that disposal, but you do. You get in there, but you can't get through because there's this screen around the edge. But you won't be stopped because you've been invited to dinner. So you work your way around the house and you find another way in, and you're coming up through the, the toilet pipe, and then You've been in the dark for a long time, and suddenly it is not just bright, but it is bright white porcelain all around you. You're completely overwhelmed. And then above you is this huge creature looking down. And does this creature say, welcome? <laughs> or maybe we won't even touch this, because we are like 20% of Americans who only drink bottled water. Now, I can understand that impulse. I mean, you look at this. It's kind of unruly. Whereas here, it's a clearly defined container. And this, I mean, it's generic. It's just water. Whereas Dasani, I'm not sure what it means exactly, but it sounds exotic. <laughs> Now, Dasani is manufactured at the, uh, by Coca-Cola at their local bottling plant. So this was actually made very close by. And to produce it, what they did is they started with this water, literally, our city water. They then purified it and added some minerals. So really, this is just a slight modification of this. As an experiment, we purchased two cents of city water. To purchase an equal volume of Dasani, this is how much it costs. And here is hydrogen water. Now, it's water with extra hydrogen in it. I'm not sure chemically how they did this. But uh, that's what it is. And then here from a, more, a local company in Seattle, there's uh, air water that has extra oxygen in it. Now, I'm thinking <laughs> these two companies get together. You take the extra hydrogen and the extra oxygen, and you can make water with extra water in it. <laughs> when I think about the history of drinking water in the Western world, I think about those Romans and the aqueduct they made and how they could bring water all the way to where they needed it from great distances. Now, unfortunately, when Rome fell, so did the aqueduct. And pretty soon you're living in London, let's say, uh, where, by the way, there is no sewer system. So any waste you have, you're dumping out the window wherever you live. So people would wear specially designed hats to protect their heads from anything that would fall on them in the street. And men had high heel shoes they would wear to give them some sort of distance from the ground. Now, add to this, they had this idea, what we'll do is we'll bury the bodies all close by. So all those bodies are decomposing down there in the water table. 
and then you have all that waste making its way into the rivers, and pretty soon people are getting sick, some are dying, and nobody wants to touch the water. So by the time it is uh, 1600, the only reason you are drinking water is because you are too poor to drink, to excuse me, to buy wine or beer. Water has such a bad reputation at this time that people won't even bathe in it. I mean, they're not afraid of it. They, it's not uncommon to go your whole life without touching soap and water to your body. I mean, maybe your hands and face, but that is it. And that's why there was this fashion of people wearing clothing that would completely cover them so they could somehow seal in anything that was unpleasant. <laughs> now, in 1700, there was a change because uh, people started, well, people with money started discovering the spa and they would travel great distances to go and enjoy the medicinal springs. Their doctor would say, go and get cured. And so they would. And then in 1800, someone had this idea, well, rather than traveling all that distance to the spa, why not bring the spa to the people? <laughs> and they started bottling the water and selling it. 1884, Louis Perrier bottles his water, and he models a bottle after the Indian Exercise Club. In the United States, it's very much like this. Uh, if you're living in Philadelphia, Boston, New York, you're not drinking the water that's coming to your tap unless you absolutely have to. You're getting it brought from bottles, from, uh, some, from springs, somewhere out of town. That is, until 1913, Philadelphia introduces chlorine into their system. And sure, water is now safe for everybody to drink, but that's not what excites the population. No, they're excited about man's conquest over nature, the advance of science. Suddenly, tap water is very popular. Nobody wants bottled water.